Hey coach, welcome to our YouTube channel. We're super excited you found us. Um, that means you're probably a basketball coach or want some resources. Uh, so go down below, make sure you subscribe, get all the updates. That's the first thing. Second thing, make sure you go check out teachhoops.com. It'll be up below. Um, it is our resource. It is our community. It is what makes um, all of this go as, the, as, my, as my neighbor starts their lawn. Uh, more but anyway have a great day um, go check it out and leave comments down below if you if there's anything that you want to see on this YouTube channel you let us know and we'll help you out bye okay yeah that'd be easy that's that that, that can be easier than the um yeah yeah, yeah. no for sure especially with you know I have about 15,000 expo markers and all of them work <laughs> <laughs> my kids get into them my students get into them and, oh you know, I know the 30 right, that I've for years not enough all right, let me, uh, hold on, let me change. Uh, audio. That's all right. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, a lot of what I have tonight is, is kind of just X's and O's stuff. Okay, talk perfect. About, talk with my staff. We want to, you know, make sure we're all on the same page yep. here early. Uh, yep. before the season and you know, usually we meet in uh, end of September again in October and then right before the season starts we all get together and I have a kind of a playbook if you want to say uh, but we're doing things different this year so I I want to make sure that I have everything ready to go here so a playbook you're talking about for the coaches or a playbook for the boys uh the a little bit of both I guess in the past okay. see in the past we've run just a super traditional four out motion uh, pass screen away, uh, looming basket cuts. I mean, get the ball inside. Like it hasn't been anything crazy. Yeah. So there really isn't a lot in there. Yep. Uh, and then just our basic zone offense is just kind of like a one-three-one set. So there really wasn't a lot to show the kids. Okay. Uh, but this year we just I have athletes and I want to do things bigger <laughs> and better. I guess yeah. you know so it's, yeah. it's a good thing. Uh, but I'm I'm struggling to get my wheels turning a little bit because. Because by my own, I'm a defensive coach. I mean, that's what I know. Yeah. So are they, are the girl, are the, you, you coach girls? Varsity boys. Varsity boys. Okay. So do the, the boys, um, are the boys cerebral? Can they pick stuff up fast? Yeah. I have a really good group of young kids that, see, that's the problem with the ninth and 10th graders. Okay. But yeah, I think so. And, and especially if I can get it in now. Yep, uh, and you want to train them so that moving forward they're going to have all this, yes. Right, and it's nice okay. thing is that actually my assistant has coached them all the way through. And yeah, I knew that. Yep, yep. Type motion. So they're, yep. they're used to moving without the ball. They haven't okay. ran off that stuff. Okay. So I guess what Tell I'm getting what thinking. is I have, a, I have a really good post player, uh, probably going to be one of the better ones in the conference this okay. year. Uh, but looking down the pipeline, like a small school you do, I'm not going to have a post player for probably <laughs> – like the next seven, eight years, unless I get okay. a transfer in. Yep. So, you know, I'm trying to do stuff this year to utilize my post player, but also have stuff that in the future, see what I'm struggling with is, is we're going to run sort of like a dribble drive motion this year. Okay. And I don't want to run like sole dribble drive because I think it's too much. We are starting to talk about like drag areas and all that stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to wear the kids down with that stuff. Yep. You want to, I mean, ideally when you push this in, you should have three rules. Everything should be no more than three. So and that's, and that's what I want. And that's what I want to talk about tonight yep. because me and my, me and my JV coach, you know, we're kind of basically like co-head coaches. We do it all together. Yep. Trying to hammer out three rules. And I've been looking at you know, dribble drive, rules been looking at read and react rules yep. trying to get some inspiration from it so basically i want a four out motion with kind of the the rule aspect of read and react but with the dribble mentality of dribble drive if that makes sense so I got, <laughs> it does it does you're so is that where you're thinking of putting the post in the low block yeah and i want to see that's see that's the issue. that's going to cause some cutting issues it is um, and, it well, is see, here's what I, i'll just kind of tell you what i'm thinking here okay in the future, I'm always going to have this post player backside. You know, so if the ball's here, you know, I want him, I want him away from the ball. Right. That way, you know, like the, the traditional dribble drive where the, he's always opposite the ball. That way when we drive, you know, we have that dump off for that. Yep. That kind of yep. yep. Like I said, we have such a, a dominant post player this year. It's going to be hard to keep him backside all the time. So I'm hoping that he can mix in a little bit of both. Well, I think you got to maybe give him different rules. I think you got to have two sets of rules if, for this year. And then 
the 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 rules you're probably going to have moving forward should be for the four exterior guys. Um, yeah. But the the I think the the big you should have some specific rules like some ball screen rules, some when to screen away rule. Right. Um, you know I I think you're gonna I think it's I think you're right. If you wanted if you want to do dribble drive stuff like if if the guy over here that has the little the little D over here on the far left if he starts driving I think you want replacement rules like how are the guys gonna replace you know you want somebody replacing behind the person that's dribbling to the basket. Right. Um, so- the only real rule that I have, so we, we experimented with this summer a little bit. Okay. And you know, we kind of use terminology like these two guys are tops, yep. these two guys are bottoms. Oh, that's a good idea. To recognize. So okay. summer we were playing around with on a on a top to bottom pass. Yeah. I had I had this guy shallow cutting. Because our problem is when we when we were cutting to the basket, they were just taking our cutters and just clogging up the lane. So we right. found that the shallow cut, it still gives this guy the ability. Can you see when I'm moving this cursor I around? I can. I can see everything. So okay. I, I agree that I think if he cuts to the basket, um, yeah, it, it's not a true read and react. So the lanes, if that post wasn't there, it would work. But the post being there is going to clog right. things up. Um, right. So, so I have him shallow cutting, you know, filling to a corner. Uh, you know, either if it's a baseline drive, this guy's staying down. You know, if he's put where the defenders would be, and then I think that will help with kind of seeing. So, uh, so with the, with the ball on the top. Well, yeah, let's do it on the top first. So the ball's on the top. The ball's on the top. Guy, the defender's gonna be. Yeah, you gotta switch. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Right. But okay, yep. So the defender's gonna be there. Okay, there's and gonna be a both the guys that in our in our league and the teams that we play, we don't see a lot of denial up the line. Uh, it's very traditional, so we'll have these guys probably more in the help position already. Right, and then this guy, the post guy, is going to be in the help. Right. I mean, there's no, there's, <laughs> there's no cut spots. That's what, that's the, that's the point I'm trying to make with that big there. Right. That you know, it's almost like the ball goes from a top to the bottom. Mm-hmm. So, so, so think about what happens. The ball goes there. Um, Yep. So the ball gets passed to the baseline. He's gonna that that guy's gonna jump to the ball. This guy's gonna jump. You almost should set a back screen for the guy. Um, that back passed screen. it. Yeah. You know, see, the only thing that's nice and what I like about the dribble drive is the idea of creating those double gaps. And I mean, but is the double gap gonna be there if they're not denying? I am, I, I'm screwing this up here. I'm screwing this up here. On a top-to-top pass, we shallow cut. I'm sorry. So on a top-to-top pass, so if the ball's here, I'm sorry. It gets passed yep. here. We're shallow cutting with this guy. I'm sorry. So oh, okay. Shallow. Okay. Yep. So it's kind of like a rub screen, sort of. Yep. So that makes more sense. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was, that was my fault. I, okay. So he is, So he's shallow cutting. Yep. You know, and then we've got that double gap with, with him coming across. Yep. And then this guy is circling up. This guy's filling okay. the corner. And you get so looks on that this summer? That seems yeah. like it would work. Yes. Yeah, we really did. And it's something simple, top to yep. top pass. Well, we're struggling with, and this is and probably why I said it because we were talking about it uh, just with my, my coach uh, today on this top to bottom pass. I want a super simple rule. You know, in years past, in the traditional, we just we had this guy setting just a screen. Right screen. away. That's what everyone does. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, do, you, do you want the corner guy to be able to dribble? Because there's not a lot of options for him. Because yeah, I want when ba- when he's when he's catching it, I want him to either attack baseline or I want him to attack middle. Okay, because personally, defensively, he ain't going baseline. If he goes baseline, I'm trapping him. That's where I want him to go. So sure. he really only has one option, which is go middle. Okay. Uh, um. So that's why I was thinking maybe you want to set up. That's why I was thinking. If the post came and set a back screen, it would keep people honest. You know, there's going to have to be some discussion between those two defenders at that point, especially the only issue is if you got them driving middle, it's going to clog things up a little bit. Are you saying set a back screen on the pass? On the guy that just passed it. Okay. Um, so you- you're going to have to do something with that post if you want him driving. Otherwise, that guy's just going to be sitting there in the middle of paint. So maybe he sets up – maybe – I don't know. Maybe these two set a double screen away, or maybe these top two set a. Uh, I don't know. I just worried about this guy sitting in the paint. Um, yeah. Because why would he move? He's not going to move. Right. Well, see, that's what I'm thinking. You know, if he can drive, if this guy can drive middle, and he steps over, you know, to yep. help. 
And then this guy's putting a spot. Either he's sliding down or we can get that kick to the corner. Yep. Yep. So then you got to keep these two guys occupied on top. And that's, and that's where I was thinking, and I was running this by, and we haven't ran a ton of it. But what if this guy comes? So on this pass, so let's put so any guy pass, back. you got to come up with a rule for the guy. So any pass yeah, from the top to the bottom. Feet, with this, if he comes over and sets a flare screen here, Ooh. and so as he's driving, I don't know if this is too complicated, if it's too involved. You know, as he's driving, this guy's put in a position. This guy's coming. You know, they're basically just switching positions. Yeah, but they're flaring. I like that because he then he it's basically giving. I always like my drivers to have outs, so mm -hmm. it's an easy rule. Any any time it goes from a top, you already have a rule from a top to a top. So right. then you need a rule from a from top to bottom is always a flare. Um, the so only issue is the post. You might want the post not to always sit there. You might want them to set a screen. Sometimes you might want them to right. curl. You might want him to, 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 to go to the, the block that in which he's – you know, you might want him to curl all the way to the opposite low block too. And that's, and that's going to be kind of the rule that I think we'll have is if he gets into the lane, you know, I want him to circle. Yep, I think that's a good move. Yeah. And then that puts, I mean, it puts both of these defenders – this guy's not going to be looking because he's going to be looking at ball. Right. I think we'll get a lot – and we, we did some of this this summer. Like we didn't have rules just out of timeouts and stuff in summer league games. We just kind of drew up motions that we wanted to see. Yep. The only issue that I have with this, and this is kind of where I'm stuck, where I'm going to go back and put everybody back. Yep. So we get this we get this top to bottom pass. Yep. And this guy comes over, sets his flare. Yep. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah. He comes over, yep. and this guy drives. The only issue that I'm having is resetting in positions after it. You know, if there's a natural. Well, I think you, I think you, I, I yeah. Um. So what's what's that guy gonna do when he gets? First of all, if he gets to the paint, he's probably gonna shoot it. But yeah, <laughs> right. Right. but That's let's say he kicks it to the other low block. Yep. So then he would just replace himself. If he mm -hmm. if he kicks to one of the guards, these guys should maybe interchange. The bot the other low baseline guy should go all the way through, okay. and he should just he should. It's just like a continuous motion to the other block. Because this guy, you know, is already you – know, he's setting this, this flare right. screen. Right, he's already high. He's already high. Yep. And so maybe this guy, like you said, yep. he can just – These two basically got to work in tandem, and these two got to work in tandem. Right. The, the only rule I don't think we've talked about is what happens when it goes from a bottom to a bottom. So right? he, he drives and kicks it. Yep. So then I, I think he can just replace back then. I do too. I do too. Because really, you only have you have options of top to top, bottom to bottom, top to bottom. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and the way I see it, you know, we don't. And I went back and watched game film. We don't see a ton of these bottom to top passes. I don't know why it just kind of works out that way, but we don't see a ton of top to bottom passes. Mostly because I taught my guys, you know, like with that dribble drive, kind of a zero count. Either right. these guys are shooting or they're driving. Right. So. We don't see a ton of passes from bottom to top. Okay. And I, think, and I think if we do get that, I don't think I need any motion off of it. I don't so, think so either. I think you got to have those three different things. And then if the big guy is good, you got to give him freedom. Right. And that's yeah. where, and that's where kind of, well, I'm going to stick with this just for a second. Cut through on time to straighten this down top to top. And then I think flare. So those are I mean, two pretty basic rules that I think I can kind of get by. Yep. Well, is there anything else that you can think of if I'm putting rules in? I wouldn't. I mean, you might want specific calls, like you might want a ball screen call, or you might want a. But I mean, if you're running a true motion, you don't. You want to keep it simple. Um, right. And that's where I was thinking. Like, if we're not scoring in transition, have some simple entries. Right. And tops can become bottoms, and bottoms can become tops. So they 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 know they have to know more than you would think they have to know. Right. Right. So I, mean, I have a couple. I have a couple like just entry kind of ideas okay. that I want to get my you know my post player involved a little bit. Yep. Because I mean there are times last year, and this is where I failed as a coach, where you know he's scoring, and then all of a sudden we don't give him the ball anymore. Right. He needs and, to get touches. He needs to get right. touches. And, I, and I'm telling the kids, hey, we need to get inside touches. We need to get inside touches. But I'm not doing anything to get him inside touch. I'm just right. Excited. And you need to show them how he can get inside touches, and that's where quick hitters and stuff like that. Can help. Well, this is yeah. one. Tell me if this is bad. Okay. 
top to bottom pass. Yep. Shallow cut, so it's looking just like a normal. Yep. But then this guy, we kind of have like a little cross here, so he's coming down. So this would be, you know, first option. Yeah. And hopefully that his defender gets caught in the mess. If not, then he comes, just kind of sets like a block to block. Then he comes across. So I'll do that. I'll, I'll well, show you. How about a double there? So ball goes down. Yep. This guy, like a normal shallow cut. Yep. This guy crosses. Doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. And then Cuts how it good is your big? Can your big hit a 12 footer? Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. So I, mean, I think I think I think you gotta take both those guards and you gotta set a double for him at that point. If you wanna get him the ball. So so yep, so that guy does the shallow. He can stay right there. So so he does the shallow. Yep, he does the shallow. He stays right there. The other guy cuts. If he doesn't get it, yep, then yep. they both in unison go over and set that and he gets to read it. The the only issue is this guy in the baseline's gotta rise a little bit to look for a skip for a three to keep mm -hmm. his man honest. And then I would set a double there. And then that gives him freedom. Am I going to go low? Am I going to go high? Maybe I'm even going to go through him huh. um, and do a double, you know, do like a low gate kind of thing. So yeah. if he's really good, good, I'd get him freedom to read like the that. screen. The only thing I, I guess the only thing I would worry about is just a lot of congestion in here. It is, but it, it, trust me, they're going to be worried about him more than your other two guards. Right. I mean, because um, he's, a, I mean, he's like a legit – 20 and 20 kind of guy. You know, right. So you, you, so they got to go set good screens and then right. he's got to read it because he's going to get the ball low. He can spin. He might get the ball high at the elbow. Um, it, it's a lot of people, but not if they're setting a good double screen together. And he has really good feet. I and mean, he's like a, he's like a low level D one defensive end type. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you want to set that. Cause that's easy because what, what it is, and you need a call that's not going to throw it off. It looks like your normal offense. Right, especially right? with the initial shallow cut. The na initial shallow cut, and maybe he even flares once in a while and then goes and sets a screen. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, you oh, yeah. He doesn't necessarily have to even cut to the basket if you really need a bucket. Flare and then go. And then they just kind of – or you can – and then you could do it as a staggered even. Yeah, so, so that is another one that I had. Yep. It was a stagger type screen off of this. Right, uh, so that one would work as a stagger too if he didn't curl and look for a hoop. He well, could have stayed high. I'm really good at drawing plays up and simple hitters for these guys. Right. Not so good at getting things for this guy. And that's really one of the only ones that I, I kind of – like, we ran this one last year and had a ton of success where we get a top-to-bottom pass. Yeah. And then that, we set a stagger here. Yeah. Circles are getting more oblong as they go. So the, these guys set a – there you go. So he, right. so he comes off of it. Yep. So he comes off of it, and he has a choice. He, he curls or he straight cuts. Yep. This guy is reading it. You know, if he, yep. if he curls and he pops, if he pops and he curls. Yep. Um, well, it's a super simple stagger, but we had a ton of success with that. Staggers that work. That's what I'm saying for the big, you can get staggers. I will find, I'll send you a couple other big things that I did when I used to have like big boys. Um, yeah. I'll find a couple. I'm writing myself a note right now. I'll find a couple other ISOs that can kind of. And that's where the, I'm telling you, I know you don't necessarily want to do it, but that's where if you, there's ways where you can clear out a side and set up, is, do you have a, do you have a decent guard that can pass on a, on a slip? Yeah. Well, I have a soft ball screen would work. <laughs> who's going to be really good. Actually, we'll see. That's the problem is so this is my senior right here. And then I have like ninth grader, ninth grader, 10th grader, 10th grader. But you know, every single one of these kids can make, I mean, legitimately five, six three-pointers a game. Right. So, so, so the issue is, so I'm going to use your top bottom thing. These two yep. top guys could go set a screen from the bottom left guy. And then yep. these guys could run a two. You got to think NBA-ish almost. These mm -hmm. two got to run a two-man game where he sets a ball screen and he flares, he rolls. And then this guy can go to the, I mean, that's where you got to think. If you've got somebody that can create with him especially if you can shoot threes, if you're setting a, a staggered away, they're going to worry about him hopping a three. So right. that's where I think you want to get, you want to get some ISOs with him setting ball screens. Yeah, and, he, and he is really good. We had, he is, he's really good at rolling to the basket. Right. That's, and, and, and if he's bigger than a lot of, you can just throw it up to him too a little bit. If he's right. athletic. So that's where I think you want to play around with, you know, Top, the tops go set a screen away. He comes across the paint and sets a ball screen. It's basically you're just it's 
it's NBA ish stuff. It's ISO. Yeah. It's like, all right, Kevin Durant and Steph Curry are going to do something together. And then, you know, who's coming off this, you know, it's, it, so that's what it, and we even had, and maybe I'm not thinking complex enough. Like we just had simple calls, like a side kind of call where the ball goes here. We'll get our shallow cut. Maybe yep. we'll, get, we'll get our shallow cut. And then we're just setting a, you know, a side ball screen. Yeah. He, he but dropped. I think you want, I think you want to, I think you want to shell cut that and then stagger for that guy in the bottom. Right. Yeah. Because, because to be honest with you, once they get one or two of those ball screens, this guy's going to be wide open at the top of the key because these guys are going to cheat. They're going to kind of coach is going to yell at them because your guy just dunked on them or whatever. So, right. you know, all of a sudden the, this guy coming off the stagger is going to work with there, or he's not, the stagger is not going to be there, but this guy flips uh, flaring back is going to be open. Um, so it's not about being complex. It's about just putting them in the right positions where we can exploit him, the big guy. We can exploit him. That's what we want to do. Right. Um, and if he can roll the basket, holy crap, I'd be running a ton of these. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's most bigs can't catch the damn ball. Uh, yeah, well, he is, he's good. It's, it was funny. As a sophomore, I didn't think that he would ever even play basketball. Right. <laughs> and also, he ran cross country one year, thinned out a bit. And just turn into a monster. Yeah. So like, we have ones like where we'll do just like a dribble handoff. Yeah. Those are dribble. great. Dribble handoffs are awesome. Yeah, and we got into it last week. Like, I never even really taught it that much. Our boys just they did it a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I could never get like the dribble handoff where I'm dribbling at you, kind of like the the read react kind of. The, yep. I don't know if that's like a is that like a power dribble or I don't know yeah. what it is where I'm dribbling. But this guy, I can never get him to then cut. <laughs> You know, I'd always get a good dribble handoff. I can never get him to it, sometimes. And that's a key. The, the cut is a layup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a layup. It's – if they cut. So, that's – again, that's got to be breakdown, though, too. And yeah. and if you're thinking of doing, like, the staggered, if you're thinking of the ball screen, you got to – I mean, I would – I would I mean, when we had – when I've had my bigs, I would literally take my one or two guards, and we'd take five, ten minutes of practice, and we'd work on just setting ball screens and the slips. And the throwing it up, let them have some fun with it. But it's like, so they get a sense of this is all about the reads, guys. Sometimes they're going to double the ball screen. Sometimes they're going to do this. So it's about it's about those reads that they're you know the play looks great, but you don't know what's going to happen defensively as a defensive coach. You know you might jump every one of those ball screens. How are we going to read that? Well, you might hedge, you might slip, you know all that kind of stuff. So you got to. You got to let them experience that so they don't freak out when it happens in a game. I like that because, I mean, you're working defense, you're working offense. You you're working double. both. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like – and I learned that the hard way. It's like, holy – you know, you, it looks great. and We run it in practice and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden someone throws and we just – you know, they got to be able to react because you're basically just – and you tell them, I'm giving you freedom. I'm isolating you and letting you do some stuff. Uh, so that's where going back to those initial rules yep. and that's well the two things we got stuck on was first like the replacing the second is we really want to work more ball screens into just a normal rule right and then we were struggling a bit the only one i could think of is if we go a top to bottom pass and he stays on this block run you know we can still we can still flare screen up here and then we right. can run a little pick and roll there. Yep, but this bottom guy's got to do something. Otherwise, his man's going to be all the way in the paint because the ball's on the baseline over there. So you got to get right. all three of them doing something when that if you want to isolate him. So that's, again, I guess that could be a stagger, I guess. It could be a staggered. It, it's just got to be something because, the thing, okay, so here's the kicker with the stagger. They're going to cheat on the stagger after you run it a couple times. Then the mm-hmm. guy that's closest to the ball on the top has to learn to slip. <laughs> that's a read and react thing. Like stagger, stagger, he's going to come up while well, they're cheating, right? They're cheating over those. This top guy that's the, the, the closest top guy to the guy in the baseline is just going to slip and he'll be wide open. I swear to God, it's you're crazy. We're coming down here to set a stagger. Yep. And you're saying this guy that I'm That guy, on. they're going to cheat. After you run it a couple of times, they're going to cheat. He's just going to slip back to, he's going to be wide open in the paint. So you're saying the defender's going to start cheating? The, 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 the defender's going to start cheating for this guy because he's wide. Yeah. Yeah, I see. So he just slips. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. if they're setting a ball screen, he'll be wide open. It's crazy. So that's where I was. That's where I was just kind of. It would be nice to have a set rule for that, for for just a ball screen. Because yeah. there are times last year too where we just kind of got away from it. 
And I, well, I think if you trust your big, I would let him just whenever you see an opening ball screen, <laughs> you know, because okay. he'll still only do it twenty five percent of the time. <laughs> see, that's and that's my issue when it comes to this stuff. Where like defense is so simple. Like when the, when the dude drives baseline, I know we need to do this. Like when when the ball's right. here, like, yep. But offensively, especially with the motion. There's so much. It, it, it's so, but, but you so, so I, trust me, that's the way I started my career. You, you got to think practice wise. How am I teaching them how to screen? How am I teaching them how to read the screen? How am I teaching them how to do the staggered? You know, we all teach about, you know, some people touch push baseline, some people push middle, some people, you know, keep them on a the side. We all work on that, but we don't work on the offensive aspect of it. So you got to try, you either got to figure out how to build them both together or I'm going to, okay, we're going to work on staggered screens. Here's the reads, guys. Let's work on these for five minutes. You probably don't think that way, and you got to somehow remind yourself in practice to do that. Right. That's the thing. Defensively, we work on situations like, you know, if, if someone's driving baseline, you know, this help side guy's got to come over. You know, we work on those individual aspects. Right. But you don't do offensively. And trust me, you'll quickly learn they're more focused when you're working on the offense. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because it's like, seriously, it's, it's well, whoa, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like a dog with a treat. Seriously. Because yeah. they just get excited because, oh, we're working on scoring. We're working on shooting threes. They love that crap. You don't have to sell them at all on that. That's when I go when I watch good teams and you know, we go down to the state tournament and I watch those teams and it just seems like oh that's just gotta be built into their offense. Like those guys gotta know that in this they're coming to set that ball screen. They do. They do. But that's repetition. It's right. repetition. It's repetition. Well, yeah. like I'm thinking like it's like built into their offense. Like that's what when I'm thinking about these rules, like, okay, it has to be like on this top to bottom post is way I they think know. You're giving those, I think you're giving those kids and coaches more credit, to be honest. Right. And that's the OCD part of my personality where I try to find logic and probably. Yeah, it, it's not. It's just, it's literally reads. It's, you know, and, and because to be honest with you, if, if it's, that's the reason people don't run. You basically, if you look at what you have on the screen right now, your setup and flex are the swing set. That's right. a swing flex set. The problem with it is this guy would pass here. He'd screen and, and it's too easy to defend. So that's right. where you got to teach them. Okay. Well, what are we going to do here? Well, maybe they're going to take this away. We got to do this then. So my first year, they were coming off a three-win season and graduated their five top scorers. Right. I had no kids that could play basketball. We ran swing for an entire season, never got out of it, and we right. won games like 40 to 28. Right. It, it was brutal basketball, but it was the only way that we could win games. And all, you know, I've put in the work these last three years or so where I got a bunch of kids that know basketball, play a ton of basketball, and I can get into – Right. Well, stuff now, but so the problem. Now, so, so this I is the hard. Want to go back to the swing because I know what they got to, you know. Like I know, but the, the, the but the hard off. part is this is where you got to give them you, you here here and I'm gonna from an old guy I'm gonna tell you, you, you don't 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 give a centimeter defensively. You yeah. got to give them some freedom offensively. Like mm -hmm. here are our rules. You know, and then that's where film comes in. This is a good shot. This is a bad shot. This was a good screen. That was a bad screen. I give my guys a lot more freedom on offense. Sure. They'll quickly know what a bad shot is. Don't get me wrong. But there's no, I, there's no compromise on defense. Like, you can't – you won't even get on the floor for me. But offensively, you know, watch the North Carolinas, watch the Dukes, watch the Connecticut's, watch the, you know, Villanova's. You got to give them because otherwise I'm going to be able to stop you. <laughs> um, I, I can out defense. I, if you, if I know what you're going to do, I can come up with a scheme to beat you. But right. if, if this guy's going to all of a sudden come and set a screen here or no, he's going to flare and do it's I, it's harder for me to defend you. Um, so that's where I think you got to give the big guy some freedom um, with screening and you know keep jacking the guards like this is a good shot this is a bad shot when do we need to get situational stuff mm -hmm. we're down six we've we've missed the last four times what do you think we need this time guys we need a post touch we need to get to the free throw line we need to get our big the ball you know they gotta you gotta start teaching them to think that stuff offensively because defensive is easy you know we just I'm curious, uh, you know how do you what are some teaching points for your post you know, because we, we've got, you know, we've had those timeouts where, you know, we got to get a post test. Next time down, let's get a post test. Yep. So, you know, we're screening, we're moving, but our big just kind of won't get open, you know, and because, you know, after you score about 6-8, they're fronting them, they're working them over, they're helping yep. them. Yep. 
I'm just kind of curious. What are your teaching points? Well, and it might not be him at that point. He might be a decoy. We might be able to get the, the one of the tops cutting the basket. It doesn't, and it doesn't necessarily. If, if if they're on a run and you're down, it doesn't have to necessarily be a post touch. We gotta get to the. We either gotta get a shot in the paint, a post touch, or a free throw. Those are what stop runs. So, you know, maybe use him as a decoy. Because to be honest with you, if he's scoring, I'm putting two guys on him. I'm making someone else hit a shot at that point. Yeah. Um, so as as that's what you got to think. Okay, maybe it's not. Maybe he's gonna. You know, we're we're gonna yell a play which they think we're gonna go to him, but we're not. We're gonna get a guy cutting the basket. We're gonna get. That's where you want to get to the free throw line. You wanna. Um, that's how you can stop runs. Free throws and post post touches which can be a guard in the in the paint area doesn't necessarily have to be him um, that's, that was the beauty of our last summer league game we were playing a team that they win the state consolation last year or something like that and you know they were they were they were playing behind them yeah they, they were doubling with the backside right so let us get in here and the amount of times that we were able to skip and then we ended up beating them right and, I wish that didn't come at the end of the season because now, you know, our boys are in football mode now and they've completely forgotten about that. Right. But, yeah. But I think you remind them of it because they'll remember. And it's like, well, then you got to convince these four guys out here that you're the best three-point shooters in the country. To be honest with you, you have to. It's like, if you're open and your feet are squared, go. And then I would be crashing the boards. Mm -hmm. I would, if you're playing four out one in and, and this corner guy shoots it, Shoot, I'd be sending two of them. Like, you go to the offensive glass like your life depends on it. Because the, if they're guards, those are hard to box. Guards, guards are horrible rebounders. They're horrible at boxing out. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's what you got to be selling that, too, in practice. Like, maybe your assistant coach only watches offensive rebounds. Because um, they're going to have two guys on him. It's going to be a lot harder for him to rebound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that kind of clears that up. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to, to talk about was, so like, we've only played man. That's all we've ever played. Yep. We've, we've experimented a little bit with some run and jump stuff, uh, mostly just in the half court. Yep. Trapping fast. Yep. I mean, it, it works. It works at our level. Oh, it you know, works. We, we, just, we just have some, some coded stuff. Like, it's something simple. Like, what did we do last year? So every defensive down, I'm yelling out colors. Um, right. Red, white, blue were, were our jump kind of series. Okay. And it was like a little different, but they're basically we're trapping the first pass and rotating. The okay. trap was from different people every time. But other than that, we haven't got that exotic defensively. I uh, love the red, white, and blue thing. I love that. Well, we got to a point where I had them numbered before in five. Oh, I love teams. that because that's easy. I've always worried about like these colors are – I love that because red, white, and blue, everybody knows red, white, and blue. That's one thing. And then every other color is something else. I love that. My first year – I'm stealing that, five. Coach. I'm using I'm yeah. use that. <laughs> so our, my first year was five, and after we've done it about four or five times, kids started to pick up on it. They knew who five was, mm -hmm. and so then we're trying to like you know hide it in. And but for two years, nobody's caught on the color coding. They don't know that it's coming. And if I can just get my not head kids, so he's coming down, right? And we want right. to trap something. Yeah. Well, this is like the one time my kids are actually getting up the line like I want them to. Yeah. Denying every pass. Right. When we want the pass to come right. down here, <laughs> but when, we, when they're not denying. We're pretty good at it, but what I, I need a I need a change of pace defense, something different. Uh, you know, you go watch these good teams, and they're not just playing straight man the whole game. You know, they have something else they can mix in there. And we we experimented a little bit with like with the one three one, but I just okay. don't have tall lanky kids. And I found yeah, if you're if you're one big if you're one big and they're not tall lanky, I wouldn't do one three one. I do. Um, right. Are you worried about protecting him? No, not necessarily. Just, you know, just something, just something to get them out of their comfort zone a little how, bit. How good are how good are the? I mean, are the teams that you're playing have? I mean, you could obviously do like a two three or a three two matchup, but you could also um, is do most of your teams have one good player, two good players? How many players are you worried about on opposing teams? One. Yeah. I mean, most I'd, teams will have one good player. I'd run a diamond and one every time. I'd have one guy chase. His only responsibility is chasing that one person. And yep. then I'd put your big down here on the bottom. So big on the bottom. Yep. Big on the bottom. He doesn't leave the paint. So this okay. is different. This is, this is why I like it. So put, 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 put the guy that, that, that guy right there and put an X by it. That's the guy you're boxing, right? Okay. Yep. So we'll put an X by him. So he's guarding that guy. 
whatever. That, yep. So he's guarding that X. So these guys, basic, the bottom, what makes us different is, and this would be good for, especially if you have a good big, he does, the bottom guy does not leave the paint. He's got block to block. That's it. And maybe yep. halfway up the paint. So he is protecting this area means you will not give up any layups. Okay. So then these three are basically running a three man zone. The, the wing will have the corner. You don't have to worry about the low block. He can come over. This guy can take low block. He's got weak side. It will freak people out. This guy will never score. The guy on the X will never score. Cause there's nowhere so for him to go. We've, we've ran into this a couple times yep. in the past right on us. Um, and we've, so help me out. So I'm thinking this from an offensive point of view. That yep. We've had luck just running guys through the middle, running cutters through the middle against us. I know. So, and if they X your, if they X your big guy. No, I'm they, saying like, offensively we ran into some diamond and ones. Right, but who did they diamond one? Your big guy. Uh, no, we had a couple decent shooting guards. I had okay, a, a okay. Because it won't work if they're doing it on the big guy. So that's okay. Yep. So on a guard, you're saying. Yeah. So on a guard, you know, so we'll, yep. you know, sometimes we'll just tell this guy just to stand at half court. So I'm gonna, a lot of the teams that will do it are, aren't as good as us. Right. So that's fine. Like, I still like my four guys better than your four guys. Yeah. I mean, it sucks for this kid. Right. But, and then we just had luck just running guys through the middle. Just running you do. But, but, I mean, if you've got four good, decent athletic guards, that won't work. I'm telling you, if they talk, if this guy's staying home, that's the difference. If this guy stays home in the low block, yeah, the, the cut's not going to be there because where's the ball right now? So do a couple passes, and I can show you where they go. All right, so let's see if I can can I put us. I'll put a circle in here. Okay, right, there's we'll the say, ball. We'll say the ball's down there right now. Yep. So this bottom guy's going to take him. This. So he's yep. going to come over. Yep. Oh, maybe. So he's going to come over. Gonna come over. This guy's going to be at the elbow. So is this guy going to be that, at the elbow? Yep, that guy's going to sink at the elbow because he's not exactly. guarding anybody right now. He's in the help line. He's right, basically so he's playing sinking. like a zone. Yeah. Okay. So there, and then this guy's got the low guy. So, so what guy, So then this guy, yeah, he's basically okay. help line. He's sinking. He's sinking. He's his foot's probably in the pain at that point. Because so if you, you, I can get to him. Have you ran this before? This I, diamond. Move? I have. I mean, do you teach us where essentially kind of like a matchup zone? It is. I mean, basically, I mean, because most more than likely they're gonna have four guys out here. They are, and the, the and the kicker is it never. The reason I've run it because I've had some like college high major big boys that I can't get in foul trouble. He's not gonna get in foul trouble. He's not gonna well, get in foul trouble because we we've always told him play behind and we can always dig on that post. Go ahead and kick it out because this is your second, third, fourth best shooter. We'll still get a hand up, and that's a and and from a dig from this wing there, we're fine. He's basically going to get every offense, every offensive. He's going to get every defensive rebound, and he's not going to get in foul trouble. I'm telling you. So what him. happens if they run this guy through, kind of like on an overload set? Yep. You know, so if he's yep. up a little bit higher, and they run this guy through. So he's going to stay. He, the, this guy is going to be here. The short. So I let him go short corner, so this post can go to the short corner, which is also, fine. And then these guys like switch. Yep. Okay. But he'll jam him when he comes through. So the big guy can jam because this guy's already sinking. So he can right. jam him and slow him. Yeah. He right. can slow him down. He's just right. not – he's literally only – that's as high as he's going. It's so nice. All right. And so it's how, a great way to protect him if he gets in foul trouble. How are you – what are you doing against this? So you're on offense right now. And they're diamond and one your guy. What are you doing? Uh, what am I doing? I'm yeah. probably overloading inside, so I'm probably putting a red over here. I'm probably putting a red. Yep, I'm putting one in the low block and one at the elbow. Low block ball set. Yep. So what I'm going to do then, because you're you're, so I'm going to probably go at your big guy at that point. Okay. Go ahead. I mean, you just got to teach him not to be stupid, because at that point everyone's rotated. He's gone. To, this guy's gone to the corner. The top guy's got this guy. This guy's no. sunk over. So basically, we've just yeah. shifted. The problem is. You got to be able to. That shift has to be pretty fast. Okay. Um, but I. But at that point, I may be going high post and then looking for an ISO for the block. But your if your big is good, I ain't scoring on you. That's that's the only spot that's open really is that low block. And I have I have I mean he's only a sophomore, uh, but he played last year as a freshman, six four, athletic. I mean he's all around our best player. 
Right. I mean, he just shuts kids down. So right. The, 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 the thing is, you're playing high school basketball. You're not playing Duke. The second, right. third, and fourth best shooters aren't as good as shooters as this good first one. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So all of a sudden, you number two and number three are not as good. And then I've also done it as an inverted triangle in two. So I left the low guy there, and I, did, I chased two guys. And then I put two guys at the elbow and put the bottom guy. The bottom guy has the same rules, doesn't leave the paint. These two got to bust their butts then because they got to cover a corner and stuff. But then what do I have shooting? I have the third or fourth best shooter on the team shooting. Go ahead. You know, and this guy is a straight thing. I mean, he's he has not, he has straight. no help. That guy, that guy, you're coming out if he scores because he shouldn't even catch the ball. Like, that's your only responsibility. You don't have any help responsibility. You have nothing. It frustrates the crud out of that kid, too. Yeah, no, and it, it – last year – well, two years ago we played a team. wasn't very good. Uh, and they just threw junk and junk after us. And we don't – you don't see this. You know, like, to be honest, it was one of, the, one of the few times that I truly felt like I was unprepared. Right, and the thing is it, – and, it, will, and it, it works two ways. It, 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 puts you in, it puts you in charge. That's the first thing. And the second thing is – it um, it it will protect your big. It's yeah. a great way to protect him. And that, and that's and that's something good to think about. I didn't even think about it that way because when this guy gets in foul trouble, you're a whole different team. We're a whole <laughs> different team at that point. And then, like, then yeah, I don't know. It never happened last year. Like I, it, it never happened last year where this guy's hurt or hurt or or foul trouble or anything. Right. And that's you can awesome. run a regular two three. I mean, you can run a regular two three five times in a game and then throw this at him. And it, I mean, you just throw it a couple times. It'll freak people out. Yeah. Um, yeah One thing with, you know, with the two, three that everybody, everybody has offense for a two, three, you know, like, yeah. and everybody kind of has offense for a one, three, one, but it's, it's something like this. Yeah. And, and even a three, two, even a three, two, that becomes a two, three, like a one, two, two. So when mm -hmm. the ball gets to the, you put your big guy at the top. And then when the ball gets below the free throw line, he sinks down to the middle. And then when the ball comes back up, he sinks. That's a good one too. To it, you're not protecting him like you are in that other one. But yeah, put the put those. So it's, it looks like a one two two or a three two. And then, yeah, that's okay. Yep. And then the other that other oval. Uh, yep, that guy would be down. So now he's up here. Holy crap! I'm not shooting from the top of the key if the big's up there. So and our then big guy's the, up here. Yep, that's your big guy. And then when the ball goes down from where you were down to there, he starts sinking. So as the ball goes down, he starts sinking. Yep. And as the ball gets lower, he sinks and he becomes the middle of the two, three. And then as the ball comes back up, he comes back up. He's going to have to work his ass off, but it freaks people out. No, and I like that. I, and maybe not this year, but I, I mean, I just have some crazy athletic tall, I mean, tallish anyways. Well, we can one, three, one. Let, let's get through this year and then, the, uh, one three. If you got tall, athletic, one three one is the best. Right. Um, it is the best. Yeah. Uh, I mean, got, but if got... the, with the big, it's not quite as good. But when you get a bunch of six three guys, oh, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I have, so I have a, I have a six grade, I guess seventh grader now that I can get up and dunk the ball. Right. I mean, it's just for us for for small town northern Minnesota basketball. I mean, one, those kids don't come around very often. No, and you want yeah, and they'll and a one three one will freak people out if you're athletic. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. we've gone against against some other teams um, that with tall athletic kids, and it seems like they're we're barely getting this top. The well, top the problem path. is you, you you basically are taking angles away. You're not yeah. trying to. They're, they're, they're just making you pass to frustrate the crud out of you because yeah. if the, the, the ball is where the top X is, and this guy's yeah. here in a one three one, it's like. You, you can't make – you just basically gap it. <laughs> yeah. we, had a team, we had a team – this is probably the second time I, I feel like I really got a little coach. But they had a super tall athletic kid here, and he was just straight front. I mean, he wasn't even staying behind him, not even quarter him. I mean, just straight fronting him. Yeah, you should. On a 1-3-1, one, one, the ball should be fronted there. Because I, mean, yeah. I mean, to a point where he was like two or three feet in front of him, but this kid <laughs> could jump so high and his arms were so long right. that he made himself right with his athleticism. And then they had big wings out here. I and mean, we could not get the ball to either corner. I and mean, it was it was a mess. I know. That's why yeah. That's that's when you don't want to yeah, when you don't have the big and So the only other thing defensively with this diamond one, <coughs> excuse me, is that I have like I said that defender that I have, 
it was good. I mean, like last year as a freshman, you know, we had teams, players that were averaging like 28 points a game and you'd hold them to like six or eight. I mean, so the dude can shut guys down. Right. So we played like our normal man, just he had no help responsibility. Yep. So, I mean, this is a little bit different look with the diamond and one, but it's essentially kind of the same thing as when we get into one of our man sets where we're just straight denying no help here. Right. So is there, aside from the diamond one, is there any other kind of change of pace defense where we're not denying just something just to kind of get them off their heels a little bit? Um, I mean, you can run that out of a man too, where everyone else is playing pack and that guy's denying. I've done that in the past. So if you're a man coach, just tweak with the man. Say, okay, you're going to be in full denial. You got no denial, and everybody else is in pack line. I mean, there's ways of dealing with it. Um, or, or or we're going to push baseline. We're going to funnel and trap when it gets to the baseline. So that's where I think if you, especially you saying you're a defensive coach, just play with that. Like we're just we're going to deny Johnny, who's the kid with the ball, and the rest of us are pack line, which means you better have a foot in the paint. You know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that's why I think you tweak with the – I don't think you reinvent the wheel. I think you stay with your man principles and you just tweak it according to, you know, whatever you want to do. If you want to deny, if you want to push baseline, if you want to double every time he gets the ball, and then when he gets rid of it, we're straight man. Kind of those kind of things. They're little tweaks, but they freak high school kids out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The rule yeah. is when John catches the ball, we're doubling them. And everyone's rotating. And then when he gets rid of it, we're straight man like we normally run. And they're going to go, what the hell are they doing? So it's, yeah. that, it, it, it's similar to that, I think. That's the beautiful spot of where, you know, where I coach. Is that, I mean, basketball is good, but it's not like that good. So last year we, we played a team that ran sort of like that Gonzaga kind of wave offense, sort of that continually ball screen. Uh, I'm not sure if you're super familiar with it or not, but we, we just jumped every ball screen. And right. I was like, they had never seen it before. They didn't know what to do. I mean, they scored like eight points in the first 10 minutes. You know, eventually the coach was pretty good, and then he adjusted. But, I mean, little things like that. I mean, everybody plays such traditional basketball here that they don't see stuff. That's like what that. I'm saying. I think it's, it's little wrinkles, not big stuff. Yeah, because in my yeah. mind, like for this, I was thinking like a matchup type zone. Yeah. But I just but don't a matchup's going to take you some time. That's, that's the problem. That's what I was worried about is that, and then, and that time is going to have to come away from from our from our other defensive time. You know, there's only so many, so much honey in the pot. Yep. That I'm yep. That yep. And here's our offense. Here's our man principles. All we're doing to these man principles are doing this one little thing. That's all we're doing. We're double. That's what I like about Nine. the diamond one is that it, it it doesn't seem that hard to coach because you're essentially paying, playing man. Right. And then on the ball, we just have to scramble and, and and just man up. Right. Yeah. That's I, what I would I, do. I would I like that idea. And then that, that, that one, two, two with that guy sinking. Yep. Okay. One, two, two. So I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you right now. You're going to do all this and, and about 70% of it's going to work and 30% is not going to work, but yeah. I think we'll, you're we'll, high. We'll, we'll tweak. We'll, 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 we'll tweak. We'll tweak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I think you're a little high on that. Even. <laughs> <laughs> I look back. So I have, I have you know, each year of like my offensive game plan. And I just look back at my first year, and I don't think I use anything. Right, but but that's I mean, if you're gonna do this gig, you got that's what you got to you got to pivot basically. Yeah, you got to pivot. No and part of it's it. changing personnel, and part of it's you know this is only my third year. Right. I'm still kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't. But all right, those were I mean those were the major ones that I had. All right. All right. When do you start practice? Uh, not until like Thanksgiving. Oh God, you're late then too. Like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, we'll get back together after you. The thing is, I've told a couple other coaches too. It's like once, like I trust me, I got pieces of paper all over my office. It's like the the thing is, we're all thinking great things, but then two weeks after the season start, we'll get back on because that's what's going to happen is this didn't work and this didn't work. And do you have huddle or a crossover? Crossover. Crossover. Okay. All right. So we can share some stuff too. Yeah, and it's hard too because so I coach football too, yeah. and. Like last, I think for the last 14 years, we've made the state tournament 12 times. And we've made the state championship four times. I mean, right. So our kids, like last year, we made the, the state semis. That was on Friday. Basketball started on Monday. Oh, and, and for you too, because I coach boys volleyball, which is right now. It's like, oh my God, I don't know how I do it. It's like, it's yeah, like juggling like six things. I know. I right. Know. <laughs> every time every time a kid's on the grass i'm just crossing my fingers oh, i don't even go anymore i don't go i can't go half my foot half my bat i want to play and don't get me wrong i love that they play 
but it just yeah. makes me too nervous. I just can't do it. But, yeah, that's, yeah. Gotta try being on the field. <laughs> yeah, it's it's got to be worse. All right, coach. We'll talk. We'll talk soon again. All right. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. All right. No problem. Anytime. Bye. Hey, coach. Hope you like that video. If you're looking for more videos just like that, check out teachhoops.com up above or down below in the show notes. I do not think you'll be disappointed. One-on-one -on -one calls, office hours, you name it. It's there for you. Learn from me. Let me help you become a better coach.